Hello, everyone. Uh, going to go ahead and get started with our week nine housekeeping items, getting closer and closer to the end of the course. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and cover a lot of this is repeat from the previous eight weeks. The feedback on the homework and quizzes, uh, assignment 1.2, that math resource center assignment uh, being closed. Uh, discussion forum feedback should be available on weeks two, four, six, seven, and eight. A reminder about the honor lock practice test. We'll talk about what's detailed relative to week nine's discussion, which is a graded forum. It's actually the last graded forum inside the class. And then the midterm exam reminder, and then my availability during week nine. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Okay, same thing as the previous eight weeks. Uh, as you continue to do quizzes, homeworks, practice midterm exam, uh, midterm exam, practice final exam, those scores are automatically updated to the class portal. Homeworks are practiced until mastery. Quizzes can be taken up to three times. Best score is recorded to the class portal. So again, nothing's changed uh, via the first eight weeks and continuing on to week nine. This video again, uh, I always bring this up each week. If for some reason week nine, you have not enrolled into my math lab, please review this announcement that's got the video in it. It goes step by step on what needs to be done to enroll into my math lab. It will show you how to do a homework or a quiz inside the class, as well as viewing the detailed feedback inside of my math lab on any homework, quiz, midterm exam, et cetera. So again, this video uh, has been available since day one of the course. Please review it if you have not as of yet. Assignment 1.2, that Math Research Center quiz still is closed. Uh, it was due either week one, week two, or week three of the course. Uh, very minimal part of the grade, only five points out of the thousand. Again, uh, do not accept it late, unfortunately, due to the process that's involved to get it from the Math Resource Center to the class portal. So again, you did have three weeks to complete it. If it wasn't completed, again, it's only five points out of the total thousand inside of the course. Feedback for uh, the five discussion forms listed here, weeks two, four, six, seven, and eight, should be inside the grade book. Review the uh, rubric that's out there. If there's any questions, please don't hesitate to send me an email in terms of the scoring of it or what was expected on those forums. Uh, discussion forums, unless you have an accommodation via the university approved, cannot be resubmitted. So uh, any of these five discussion forums referenced here, you cannot resubmit unless there was some accommodation that was previously approved. So uh, again, said this the previous weeks, but again, just want to reiterate this to make sure we're all on the same page. Honor lock practice test. We are in week nine at this point. If you have not done this, please, 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 please go out and complete this honor lock practice test. If you're having issues with it, contact me, the instructor, or any use technical support at 1-800-548-0602. Uh, you need to get this done because there are no extensions if you do not have this up ready to go to take your final exam week 11. So I cover this in great detail in the week one housekeeping announcement. Please review that if you have not done this already. So I cannot stress this enough. Once week 11 rolls around and it's Sunday night and you can't get on a lock to work, there will not be any extensions as a result of this because we've said this week one, week two, week three, all the way through week nine, and I'm gonna say it again, week 10, that you need to get this done as soon as possible if you have not already done that, because we wanna make sure you're successful and you're not having any technical issues once week 11 rolls around to take that final exam utilizing Honor Lock. All right, week nine is your last graded discussion forum for the class. It is worth 15 points possible. It's the same thing as last week, week seven, week four and week two. Nine points for the original, three for each response. It opens 12 a.m. Mountain Time on Monday of week nine, closes 11.59 p.m. Uh, on Sunday. Initial post has gotta be in there by Thursday on or before 11.59 p.m. Mountain Time on Thursday of week nine. 
they don't open early, unless you have an accommodation, they are not accepted late. Initial post nine points, already covered that. Response is three for the first one. Second one is three, nine plus three plus three, gets you to 15. Uh, again, the discussion forum for week nine closes at 11.59 p.m. Mountain Time. If you try to do any post afterwards, you are locked out and no further uh, postings can be made on that discussion forum. Timekeeper is D2L. We've said that the first eight weeks. If the initial post is not in by 11.59 p.m. Mountain Time, either Mountain Standard Time or Mountain Daylight Time, depending on when you're taking the course, it will count as a response, but it will not count for the initial nine points. So again, use time management. We've talked about that the previous eight weeks. The initial post of the hello posting for attendance, we've talked about that previously. It will be deleted by the instructor, will not count for points uh, in that instance. So please uh, don't do a placeholder. Uh, you'll get the screenshot and it'll be deleted and you won't earn points on it. Don't wanna go down that route. So uh, again, we've said that the previous eight weeks, just reiterating it here to be on the same page. Student must post first. You don't see any other students postings. We've already talked about that previously in a discussion forum. And then the responses, the, hey, you did a good job, post one sentence on a response, don't do that. Again, you've got several options to get to your responses. Uh, anything from homework nine, go out and post an initial problem. If you're doing your initial post Monday through Thursday, respond to my follow-up question that's out there. That's a good way to do that. Responding to another student in terms of correcting what's out there or creating a subsequent example that is math centric. Again, we've iterated this previously in the previous eight weeks. Again, just wanna make sure we're doing the same thing on this last graded forum inside of the class. And then let's go ahead and do the demonstration of uh, week nine's forum. So let me get into the forum here. Let me go back one, there we go. Come into the discussion. Let's make this a little bit bigger here so we can see it. Okay, we are going to calculate this week what are called Z-scores. Z-scores gives us relative information between an observation, your mean, and your standard deviation. So we have two standardized tests, the ACT and the SAT. We're going to calculate a series of two Z-scores and then from that, whichever one is larger out of the two is going to be the one that's relatively better. So let's take a look at uh, how do you determine what you're going to do? Hey, I bet it's by your last name. We've done that week two, week four, week six, week seven, and uh, not week eight. You use your own source data. But uh, we've done the same process in the previous weeks. So if I open up this guy, and again, relative to your last name, you're going to, if it's Bugs Bunny, letter B, you're going to use an SAT as an observed score of 655, an ACT score of 12. If it was Michael Wieman, 771 is the observed SAT score, 22 is going to be my observed score for the ACT. So you've got that available. That is the two observed data points you're going to use as of the one you're going to solve. So Again, this is what tells you what is your two observed values for both the SAT and the ACT respectively. So let me close out of that and I'm gonna show the example here and walk through it. So in this case, we're gonna calculate two Z scores. And again, it's the same setup data, SAT has a mean of 1518, standard deviation of 325. The ACT test has a mean of 21.1 and a standard deviation of 4.8. I'm gonna use an SAT score of 1618. That is my observed value. That in that other PDF was that first value associated with the first letter of your last name. Same deal with the ACT score. That's the value directly to the right of it. So you're gonna use these two wherever we see the word observed inside the formula. So for the SAT, your observed 
is the 1618. The mean is 1518. Notice the 1618, the 1518. The standard deviation from up here was 325. Gets plugged into the uh, formula 325. The first thing you're going to do, you're going to take 1618 minus 1518. That gives you 100. Bring down the 325. This is division. Take the 100 divided by 325, 0.308. So the Z value for the SAT is that 0 0.308. Same song, different verse, you're going to do the ACT. Earlier, we said that the mean up here at the top was 21.1. That is where that 21.1 is coming into play. The 4.8 from the original problem that was given is the bottom. The only thing that is different on everybody's is going to be your observed value. Again, obtained from that other PDF that we just took a look at earlier. So the SAT score is 23. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take 23, whatever your observed value, minus the 21.1, that's going to get you the 1.9. Take that result, divide by 4.8, is going to give you the Z value of 0.396. Now, out of 0.396 and 0.308, which one is the larger value? The 0.396 is larger or greater than the 0 0.308, so the ACT is relatively better. Now, for some of you, ACT is going to be relatively better. For others of you, the SAT is going to be relatively better. The way you make the determination is out of this Z value for the ACT and the one you come up with on the SAT, which one is the larger value out of the two? Now, want to throw this as a caveat because you're going to, some of you may run into this inside of it. And I just want to make sure everybody's on the same page. Let's say all said and done, your SAT comes back and you can get negative values on this. So let's say your SAT relative value is negative 1.23 and the ACT comes back as negative 5.42, for example. Of these two values, if I look at from a number value perspective, here's negative one. Negative 1. 1.23, that's the brown dot. And the negative 5.542 is this. So this is my ACT. And this guy up here is my SAT. Of those two values, which one's larger? Well, the one that's larger is the one that is most furthest to the right. So in this instance, Based on these two values, if I calculated it, the SAT would have been the larger of the two. So if you get Z values that are both negative and you need to clarify, just draw it on a number line, which one is furthest to the right relative to the number line? That's going to make the determination which one is relatively better. The relatively better is the larger value of the two. Or another way to say it, negative 1.23 is more is less negative than negative 0.542, i.e. number line furthest to the right. So I should have actually done that because that's backwards, furthest to the right. Anyhow, that's what's involved in the week nine discussion. This is what you're going to need to show, the details of that, of the calculation, as well as the response of which one is relatively better as part of your initial post. Now, when it comes to a response, week nine homework, do that as one of your posts. Respond to my follow-up question. Uh, constructive criticism on anybody's calculation. Come up with a different set of numbers. Do that calculation. All good options for responses to this week nine discussion forum. All right, let me close out this, come back to the PowerPoint. We've got two more slides here. Okay, we are in week nine. I've talked about this since week eight. Midterm exam is still open, open through the very last day of the class, that 11.59 p.m. Mountain Time on Sunday. Uh, only one attempt on the midterm, but if you have not completed this, this is still on your plate to be done before the end of class. So again, pass this on as a friendly reminder. 
Nothing has changed relative to the previous weeks. But again, uh, if you have not completed this, uh, you will need to. The only thing that's different relative to other quizzes is you only get one attempt at the midterm exam. And then last but not least, my availability during week nine, same as the previous eight weeks, I'll be inside the portal Monday through Friday, as well as Saturday morning. Benchmark is 24 hours to get back with you on any questions or emails. It should be significantly less unless I've announced in the class portal that I'll be out for some reason. After Saturday morning, uh, Saturday afternoon, all the way through Sunday, uh, you may not get a response back until Monday. So that's my time away from facilitating a course. You do have my email that has not changed, as well as my Google phone number that goes directly to voicemails and replied back via email. Let me know if there's any questions. Thanks.